Did you watch Okiyama? I hope you did, because it was a whale of a show. Racim Fuzui coming away with the win, but a side-by-side -side battle for second between Hartley and Semenek stole the show, and it was a fight for fourth and fifth as well. If round one was any indication, hang on, because it's going to be a wild season for Big C's MX5 Challenge Series. And with Watton's Glen being what it is, get just as nuts here so sit down get comfortable and make sure the edge of your seat is ready as we get ready to watch round two of the big c's mx5 challenge and you'll see it all live right here on the global sim racing channel hi i'm adam young and with me in the booth is ryan jones we got aussie and puhaka watching the back of the field for us tonight in the director chair sean ambrose and he's using cameras provided by dougie beard Watton's Glen will be a track that will share some characteristics with the, from Okiyama last week with a few more high-speed corners mixed in. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Glen with today's track guide. Welcome to Watkins Glen International. Situated in upstate New York, just south of the Finger Lakes, this track has seen it all. Few road circuits can boast hosting Formula One, IndyCar, NASCAR, and IMSA during its history. Though it did have a brief fallow period in the early 80s, thanks to the investment of local companies, it's grown into one of the premier road tracks in the U.S. With four layouts to choose from that range between two and a half and three and a half miles in length, lap times can vary greatly. But it also means it's suitable for lots of different levels of racing, from amateur to pro. The one thing that stays consistent no matter which car and which layout you're using is that Watkins Glen means speed. Many of the straights are very long and the majority of the corners are fast sweepers. Some of them include a surprising amount of banking as well. Combine that with the proximity of the barriers and this historic circuit retains a very old school feel. Drivers in lesser powered cars can expect drafting battles, while higher powered machinery will test the skill and bravery of their pilots. Some of the turns are visually iconic, such as the carousel and the S's. Others, like the inner loop, the chute, and turn nine, greatly challenge even the expertly skilled. And of course, we haven't even mentioned the drastic amount of elevation change drivers experience. Between its rich history and popularity among drivers, this track stays busy and seems likely to be that way for a long, long time. Ryan, it's going to be our first time working together, so welcome to the GSRC family. Watton's Glen and the MX-5 sounds like a great combination. What's your take on that, your experience on the Glen, and some of that track info? Yeah, thanks, Adam. Well, certainly the Watkins Glen always provides some fantastic racing action, and the track for today's race, utilizing the classic boot layout, which means we've got the extended back straight with the inner loop being taken out of the equation, that longer straight means plenty of opportunity for slipstreaming and subsequent overtaking down at turn 5, the carousel. There's a few tricky corners at this track though, notably the S section turns 2, 3 and 4. The drivers are placed for winding uphill stretch of track where you really don't want to be going side by side, but plenty of areas for overtaking. An opportunity quite literally around every bend from the second sector onwards. We should see some great racing and plenty of overtaking in today's race. Thanks for that, Ryan, and you are watching the GTR Countdown to Green. GTR racing simulators are currently used as training aids for professional race car drivers. You too can learn to ace that braking, sharpen those corners, and shave off those vital seconds. Whether you're a professional driver or a gamer looking for a more immersive experience in a way to play, GTR has your back. Get started today at gtrsimulator.com. Hey, one race in, that means we do have some championship standings to show you here. Uh, Razim Fazui uh, with that 
big win uh, last week, uh, just over two seconds over Hartley and Semenek. And I tell you what, uh, uh, that battle between uh, Robert and Paul last week uh, pretty much stole the show. I'm trying to see if, if Hartley was able to, to make the race here for today with 60 drivers in the field. I'm going to have to dig a little bit deeper into those standings. But I do know uh, uh, Powell's here, uh, Opstall's here, Lindroth, though, those two had a great battle there at the end of the race last week so uh gonna be a, a great season i think in store for us here and this is just round one of those standings so we'll see how watton's gun plays out today hey also gsrc we've got a merchandise store now always been a fan of gsrc well here's your chance to go ahead and wrap out with shirts uh, you got tote bags got hats uh, all different kinds of shirts so you've got the uh you know the uh, polo shirts out there now so you can go to the track now you can wear one of those polo shirts and be like a uh, uh you know actual press guy or something like that just use that as your press pass trust me it'll just be perfectly okay and we got qualifying details on tap free here today those are presented by shh shifter shh shifter uses only the best commercial plastics to create the high quality 3d printed shifters you need to perform your best on the racetrack their commitment to detail and durability ensures that you receive the perfect shifter find them on the web at shifter ssh.com and i uh, tell you what uh, right go ahead and walk, talk us through those qualifying details so they've got a uh, 15 minutes to qualify today they're gonna do four laps in that well they can do up to four laps in this qualifying session so I think we saw them that we saw last week from the, the front row was they went out there did their first lap opted to send the car back to the pit lane do another warm-up lap and then lap three at four were their fastest laps wonderful set again today Vincent Sellas currently a uh, fastest He's done one lap, he's currently sat in pit lane, waiting, hoping maybe the track's going to come down, maybe about a degree or so, doesn't doesn't sound like a huge amount, but uh, it can gain you that half a tenth even, which can really make a difference when you have 60 cars, a half a tenth can sometimes mean half a dozen spots. Yeah, I really can, and uh, we can put the uh, preliminary uh, lineup here on the on the screen. Uh, show you where everybody's at right now. And Vincent Salas on the provisional pole. Now he's out by about that half a second over top of Fernando Busquets, but. Uh, Outside of that, from second place all the way down to at least, uh, it looks like, uh, to about 19th is only separated by a second. So uh, once you get past Vincent Salas, who was really fast in practice, looks like he's going to be fast in qualifying, uh, the competition's really tight. So you're right, Ryan, in that tenths of a second are going to be very critical here as these guys uh, set their qualifying laps. Uh, on the screen right now, Logan Clampett. Uh, you've probably uh, seen Logan Quite a bit around here. His fast slap so far was a 208-121. Uh, that will put him a third on the grid here so far today. As look for a little bit more pace out of this particular lap from him. Trying to see, in fact, which lap he is on. And this is that's only his first time. So this is going to be a second uh, timed lap here coming up. Yeah, indeed. And just on that Brent, on that uh, Hartley note too. He isn't in the field for today, so uh, we might not, we won't see the battle between him and uh, Summonak resume, but maybe between Summonak and someone else, or even two completely different drivers in the this massive field today, but uh, a shame not to see Hartley back today. Yeah, he definitely uh, was up there running the entire way through Okiyama, and then uh, uh, it would have been nice to see him out there today, but of course, uh, you know, it doesn't always work out uh, uh, in series like this where you're able to get everybody every single week, but still, we got 59 other guys out there that could uh, potentially take his spot here today. I was right now looking at uh, William Cabrera, then moving over to Rui uh, Coimbra. It was deep down in the grid, trying to do a little bit of a better lap here, see if he's able to come across, but that was actually slower, it looks like, by about two-tenths of a second. So uh, not what he was looking for, as he'll be back in the 50s. Very, very large field here for today. We had 60 last week. It looks like we're going to have 60 again this week, all in these Mazda MX-5s. And it is, uh, it'll be screaming into turn one on a, a standing start. Yeah, it certainly will be. Luckily for the uh, pole sitters, or well, the first uh, couple of rows, it's a relatively short run down to turn number one. So if you do fail to get the car off the line perfectly, your loss will be minimized to an effect comparative to, say, Barcelona. If you get away 
horribly there, you're going to lose maybe even a dozen spots. Luckily here, relatively short run. And then again, out of turn one and turn two, you've got to try and sort yourselves out relatively quickly because uh, that S's section is incredibly hairy. Luckily, these cars are low horsepower, so you can get through there side by side, but boy, I don't recommend it. Now, before we get into the action, I mentioned that we do have a third member of the broadcast team that uh, decided he wanted to go ahead and volunteer his time and help us watch the uh, uh, watch the back half of the field. Uh, uh, Ossie and Puhaka joining us today. Ossie, uh, what's your take here so far uh, in the halfway through qualifying? Well, a lot of drivers with an excellent pace. A lot of talk has been made about these conditions now. Track temp 28 Celsius and 25 air temp looking very good for racing and as for the results Vicente Salas has been very fast and drivers wondering how they can catch him up and an interesting tidbit from other parts of the field you notice all those Finns in the field Raisen and Haro Arvilommi so on they are all on the same radio chatter a lot of teammates there and a lot of drivers and they will be all in constant communication with each other back to you on the boot yeah, that's uh, one thing that we've seen in the past. Sometimes those teammates actually getting together, but you know, they make up pretty good mostly because, well, they're able to talk it out really quickly as well. Hey, one thing that's uh, unique, if you're just joining us, maybe you've never seen an MX-5 Challenge Series race. Yeah, you're getting ready to see a massive field of 60 cars. But a cool thing, too, is the fact that these races start in the evening. Yeah, it's already starting to get a little dark here on track and already about 737 in virtual standard time. So track temperatures will be coming down and you'll eventually see those lights kick on but for today's race details i'm going to throw it back over to ryan for the race today 40 minute race and they are uh, limited on the field they're going to have to make one pit stop at some point which means strategy is going to play a factor in this one a bit of slipstreaming as well going to go a long way to helping you save some fuel so look out for drivers maybe opting not to make a move maybe sitting behind to save some fuel at some point instant cap of 20 as well so as with last week, as with uh, the rest of the season too. Don't go too hard on your moves and uh, pick up a couple of contacts with cars because you can't afford it. You only got 20 incidents and uh, you want sometimes, you want to have a few up your sleeve to just extend the track a couple of times towards the end of the race to try and eke out every last second you can in those crucial battles. Yeah, and Clifford Evan uh, just uh, found out just how uh, uh, hard that can be going through turn 11, slapping the tire barrier. So you can rack up the incidents here pretty quick. You saw Raseem Fazui uh, on your screen just a minute ago. He's mired back in, uh, uh, it wasn't 15th. I think he was able to get a few more. No, he's still sitting in 15th. So uh, looking at Jonas Seeger now coming across the line. Very, very competitive field. I mean, we we're talking about a field where only 1 through 15 score points. For Seam Fazui, looks like he might start this thing around that 15th mark. And he was last week's winner and a constant guy that's usually fast in this series. So that gives you an idea of just how competitive this 60-car field is going to be here for today. Is riding on board now Brandon Hawk. And Brandon's been a guy that's uh, shown some speed in the past. Uh, Rui uh, Coimbra here, he's going to be coming across a 209 5 Two, two. Now, that's uh, that's not too far. I mean, that's only two seconds off your leader's time, but that still has him way back in the field, a little, lot further back than what he wants to be. So that's that's going to be something to watch out for. Some of these guys could actually have a little bit of good pace uh, once we get into the race outside of qualifying. Yes, yeah, so there's uh, 2.9 seconds covering all 59 drivers that have set times. That is ridiculous. Oh, sorry, hang on. 7 5, 11 5. My, my math's failing me there. It's, uh, I believe, 3.9 seconds. But you get the point. That is uh, ridiculously typed in the whole field. What it means is huge packs of cars. What it also means is uh, if you start buried in the pack, and uh, maybe later on, or if you're looking to be in the championship hunt later on, you've really got to be careful because big packs often mean big crashes. And uh, with someone like Racine Fazilli, we know he's got pace. He won last time out. He's currently back in. Uh, Oh, there we go. He's just jumped up to sixth place for 208, 273, and uh, he'll be happy with that because if you want to be in the championship, you cannot be aff afford to be back in those big battles. Yeah, looking at Joni Hagner here, uh, the Finnish driver coming across now, and that's going to be putting him in eighth position. So that is a good time for Joni. Uh, he'll be able to go ahead and. Uh, 
have a good start here. I think if you could start in the top 10 here today, because you mentioned, uh, Ryan, just a second ago, just how kind of chaotic things can get. If you could start in the top 10 and kind of avoid some of that chaos, you got a pretty decent chance at, at having a good start. Just uh, want to... Before we get to the start and grid here in just a moment, it's going to be a very large start and grid, so we're going to have to go through it quickly. I do want to mention that the start and grid here for the race is going to be brought to you by Sim Racing Studio. Want to enhance your sim racing experience but don't feel like hours doing it? Sim Racing Studio creates plug-in race sim racing accessories and software to enhance your experience without any DIY effort. Go to simracing.com for, excuse me, simracingstudio.com for more information. And on the grid, Vincent Salas coming away with the pole alongside him, Logan Clampett. Uh, Jaume Dalmasas Del, uh, Torres, we've seen him quite a bit in races like ABL. He'll be in row two alongside Fernando and Tolly Basquet. Rafael uh, Dras, uh, Drasas will be in fifth. Racine Fazui, last week's winner, was able to get up to sixth position. Brandon Hawken in seventh and Joni Hogner in eighth. In ninth position is going to be Graham Sanders and Stephen Van Opstel will start in tenth. Bal Zemanek will start from 11th uh, for that big battle last time out. Christian Lindroff will be 12th and the head of the head of uh, Midi Farthy in 13th and Clifford Eben 14th. Ari Harrow and uh, Nicholas Berger lining up behind them. Anthony Burrows and uh, Richard Schoffner on the ninth row of the grid ahead of Nicholas O'Shaw and Juan Manuel Fernandez. Going back to row 11. And we're going to be trying to get through as many of these as we can before we take the green flag. Marcus uh, Altolan in 21st. Uh, Kuchi Katamara in 22nd. Sam uh, Devantier in 23rd. Jonas Seeger in 24th. Jeff Lavelle in 25th. Miroslav Nastaga in 26th. Jose Soraya in 27th. Sochi Ismara in 28th. Alex, Alex Cufford in 29th. Otis C. Adams in 30th. And I'm just going to keep reading them here just so we can try to get through as many. 31st, uh, Rui uh, Coimbra. William Cabrera in 31st, 32nd. 33rd, Ab Ab Abisek Bukubi in 33rd. Christian Kruktopi in 34th. 35th is going to go to George Fike. Alex Albert, 36th. Bruno Boncara in 37th. Kian Raleigh Howell in 38th. Nico Avalami in 39th. Brian Splesky in 40th. 41st, almost out of breath here. This is a lot of names. Simon Apaldig in the Nick Cardi in 42nd. I'm here. The engine's revving up. We better go up to your pole sitter. Yeah, that's right. We are away here at Watton's Glen. Vincent Salas taking the field down. He doesn't get as good of a start as what Logan Clampett was able to do. Logan Clampett's actually going to be leading this field going down into turn one. Seems like at least the top 10 is able to get through. Most of them side by side, though. Yame Torres, he's going to settle into third. Fernando Busquets, he's going to be in fourth. But side by side, Rafael Drush and looks like Racine Fazui. They'll be taking up that fifth and sixth position behind them. Still uh, side by side, Hawken and Yehagner. As it looks like the top half of the field starting to get sorted out here as we start taking our first trip toward the inner loop. What a start for Logan Clampett, converted off the line beautifully, but look at that slipstream effect down this back straight over the whole field. The top dozen cars closing up drastically, and Clampett is actually dropped back in behind Vincent Salas. So Salas goes back to the lead, and Torres is now watching Busquets, and uh, Draskowitz goes side by side, Isma, and uh, up the inside goes Busquets, and off. Oh, looks like Draskowitz is going to lose a couple more spots too, because uh, through goes Brennan Hawken and Faz Razine Fazui. Seems like most of the top half of the field through the first half of the racetrack clean, although there has been hard racing. It is now we're working our way through the famous boot section that we all hope that one day NASCAR will actually try to run, but not yet. In the meantime, Vincent Salas has to show us how it's done. He's heading up to turn nine here. And uh, this, uh, excuse me, uh, this is uh, turn eight, and then kind of coming up to turn nine. Once we get to turn nine, this is a, one of those problem areas on the racetrack, Ryan. You'll see a lot of action here. Is uh, uh, so It's an easy corner to misjudge. It is. You can't see the exit of the corner until you're basically halfway through it because it, you're coming up over a crest there, and it's incredibly easy to get wrong. And... Uh, it can be an overtaking spot, but because you can't judge where the exit of the corner is, you're doing it based off feel and experience. Yeah, very easy to get wrong, and we could see a fair bit of trouble there today as a uh, first lap's going to be completed. And Salas, despite losing a lead, still going to be in the lead coming off the end of the first lap. 
Okay, first lap is completed. There are cars on pit road. Apparently, there was an incident on the starting line uh, that uh, there was a car that stalled and did collect a few back there. So uh, that'll be something we'll get back to if we have time. But right now, focusing on that front half of the field is uh, looking at Jaime Torres. Uh, he's got uh, uh, baskets uh, all on the back of him, and he's going to have a good run here up through the S's. He'll be able to go ahead and actually bump draft Yame Torres just a little bit. They aren't running that inner loop section here today, so they don't have to worry about the chicane here. They're heading to the outer loop, though. Don't want to be bump drafting going through there. And Logan Clampett is going to go back to the lead of the race. I think this is going to be something we're going to be seeing all day long down that long back straightaway. The lead of the race is going to be changing hands almost every lap because if you're the preceding car, the car in front, it's almost powerless. You cannot defend it because you can't move more than once to defend your position. You can't block. And uh, coming on to that last lap, if you look that far ahead, I might not want to be the car leading. No, no. We've seen many times that some of these uh, uh, lower, and I don't want to necessarily want to say lower horsepower. These MX-5s do have quite a bit, but sometimes in some of these races, you almost want to be that third car in line and, and split the middle. We've seen that work a lot here. Now, your leaders are, once again, working their way through the boot section. You do have other cars, uh, the tail end of the lead lap, that are coming out of the boot section right now. It gives you an idea of just how far things have spread out already uh, through the field as we got 59 cars that ended up taking the start of this race now one thing to mention uh, if you're just joining us these cars these guys do get two fast repairs here for today so if you do happen to find yourself in an instant get on pit road as fast as you can take your fast repair get out there because a field this size you don't know what's going to happen the rest of the way you very well could get a lot of positions back yeah you certainly could and nothing to note too is because of the racing we're seeing with that long straight, it bunches the first dozen cars up and coming across the line, there's 10 cars separated by 2.7 seconds. And as the racing goes on and I <laughs> use up all of the available track on the exit of turn one, we're gonna see a lot of cars brought into the picture purely through the uh, front guys battling because they can't get away from each other. When you go side by side, we all know, you slow each other up dramatically, but I tell you what, Who's going to be in the box seat here? Because the top four almost bumper to bumper by the time they even reach the back straight and look for the huge run from Busquets and he backs out of it. But uh, now they're bump drafting their way down the back straight. And you talk about having to lift out of that. I mean, you could see how much time he lost by just having to get off the throttle there as uh, pretty much take him out of contention of trying to gain any kind of spot. We were looking at Von Opstel and Hagner now going back just a little bit. We know, we know the top uh, the leader isn't gonna really going to cool down here anytime soon. But uh, looking at Opstel and Hagner now, they're only separated by about a tenth. That is a hornet's nest back there in about the back half of the top ten. You're looking at about eighth, ninth, and tenth back there. You are. I was just watching this little group I, uh, about half a lap ago, and there were a little bit of contact between, I believe it was Simonek, actually getting edged off the exit of the uh, the approach to turn 11. Held onto it, lost a spot though, and uh, is watching on this battle between Hagner and Opsil. Technically, these guys are in the battle for the lead of the race because they're all bumper to bumper. So there's a 10 car battle for the lead, and they're all trying not to run into issues as Simonek ran into issues there, right in front of Linderoff. And it was another contact, the orange car was uh, Clifford Eben, I do believe, and that was a little bit awkward there. And it wasn't, it was actually, sorry, Graham Sanders. Yeah, a little bit awkward, but everybody's able to survive here, uh, which is uh, good news. I don't think we've had much in the way of actual retirements, although uh, we have had some cars on pit road at times. So, uh, but so far, all 59 cars still in this race. Although we are hearing now, uh, 97 car actually just blew his engine. So uh, he's going to be having to try to take his fast repairs. We'll see if he wants to continue on. Yeah, luckily you do get those fast repairs. Basically, a uh, a spare car in the garage that we used to see. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you saw that, but saw that, that. that was that was Yame Torres. He was way out in the grass. That's something you don't want to try to pull off too much because that inside arm co comes up in a hurry once those rear wheels break loose. But he, once again, he survives. Logan Clampett, though, he's finding himself on the back end. Bus gets. He's got a huge run. We're going to have tandem drafting here going down the back straightaway, heading toward the outer loop. They are pushing each other down there. 
And see if everybody's going to come out of this one is now it looks like the start of an oval race as all cars are side by side about three or four rows deep. And they all get sorted out by the time we head to the outside of the outer loop and heading down the chute into turn six here. Vincent Salas is going to find himself on the outside of that. Uh, looked like Logan Clampett's back in one and try to step loose on him a little bit, but he uses that for power more than anything else. He's going to still edge him out. Although Vincent Salas, once again, is going to have the inside here as we head through the toe. Down that back straight, I think a couple of drivers might have learned something because uh, right at the end of the straight, back in seventh place, Rafael Drasic had an incredible turn of speed on the cars around him, about 10 kilometers faster, I reckon by the uh, time they reached race at turn five. And if anyone took note to where he started along that back straight compared to the guys he caught, they might want to think about that coming into the uh, more critical stages of the race later on. And that's what a lot of this first 10 minutes has been about, has been about the learning. You hit the nail on the head uh, about where that could go. Uh, trying to look through the field right now, see if we've got any big movers, at least in the top half of the field. And uh, there is one, and it, it does require us to go back just a little bit bit but uh adam uh Marriac started in 43rd position he's worked himself up to 28th so uh that's a that's a good run and just a handful of laps there for adam Marriac. uh also looking at lap traffic now gonna start to become a factor here for the leaders uh good go ahead go over to osias and uh, puhaka here real quick he's been watching the back half of the field for us uh can you give us a recap of what you've been seeing a lot of fights and a lot of battling. These drivers absolutely love to battle. If it's been wild at the front, it's also been wild at the rear. But I believe you have something wild going on at the front. Yeah, side. yeah, yeah. We're looking out, uh, heading down the back straight. We're going to be seeing this all race long, I think. <laughs> Logan Clampett taking him down the fr fr coming out of the S's, going down the back straightaway. Busquets, he forced his way through to make room between himself and uh, Vincent Salas, and it looks like he might edge out the lead. Oh, they're, they're wrecking right behind them. Back half of the top 10 is in an accident. Trying to see how it is. It's Opstel. Okay. We had our eye on him. Brandon Hawken also involved making contact there at the back end of the back straight. Got to replay Pull that up. On Go ahead. Yeah. We can see what happened here between Opstel and Brendan Hawken heading down the back straight. They've just made contact. They're heading into the braking zone and pitched the cars onto the wall, into the wall on the left-hand side. And heavy damage to both cars. I have to get a fast car, fast repair and get a spare car back when I get back to pit lane. But let's go back to the front. It's Clampett that leads them from Busquets. Salas is back to third place now. Yeah, Clampett uh, trying to do his best, able to take that back uh, between uh, Biscuits and Salas. Is uh, Clampett showing that he has the, the chance here to actually stay out in front? He, I'm so far here early on in the running, guys. I, I really think Logan Clampett's the one that's shown that he has the power, is able to work that draft the best whenever he gets behind. Now, Biscuits isn't very far behind, uh, but he hasn't been able to find himself in an advantageous position here just yet. Well, you talk about Logan Clampett being the one to utilize that draft the most. Where have we seen Clampett utilize some drafts in the, some big races? As Carp began for his iRacing series, so uh, Clampett is uh, no stranger to the draft, and I do wonder whether that may be playing some sort of tiny advantage for him today, knowing uh, just how that's going to work for him in, the, in terms of how far back he needs to be to utilize the best run possible. Yeah, that's a lot of experience, a lot of experience elsewhere. Also sitting in that top five, we've seen Biscuits and, you know, tight races, Salas, uh, Yame Torres. We've seen him uh, in some tight races over the years as well. And all these guys running right now with that peak antifreeze driver. As we're looking once again at some bump driving here, Vincent Salas pushing Biscuits, but Biscuits leaves him. He's going to pull in front of Clampett. Clampett's going to end up getting on his back bumper and try pushing him a little bit. Ooh, Clampett's being pushed by Yaume Torres. With now, looks like Salas trying to hold his own on the outside of the inner, of the outer loop, but if he's able to hold that down the chute, which he is not, he'll have the inside going through turn six. Oh, Although, oh Biscuits, uh, I don't know if he got, it looked like maybe a little yeah, bit of that little code of there. And that pushed yeah. him out wide. Yeah, a little bit of a touch to the uh, to the left rear of Josic then. It's high stakes stuff this, because down that back straight, when we see them bump drafting, the tandem drafting how they are, 
if the if you have a big run and you opt to push the car in front, you've got to be really careful that you line it up perfectly. If you catch to left or the right rear, you're going to spin that car in front of you, and when you're at the head of about a dozen car long train, you're going to cause a huge incident if you do that. So it may look relatively simple, but trust me, it's very uh, risky stuff out there if you get it wrong. And also the braking zone for turn five, they're so closely packed, you can't afford to miss your braking marker by the slightest of margins either. You hit the nail on the head. It's important to note uh, in that regard that the, the front ends of these MX-5s and the back bumpers for that matter, uh, they are not fl flush. They don't match up flush. They're curved and everything else. So if you try to push it somebody one direction or the other, you could actually turn them around and, and cause that big accident like you said. So uh, that's going to be something we're definitely going to have to keep an eye on here is uh, Logan Clampett trying to go back to the lead. Looks like we've got a little bit of the car blinking there. That was uh, Rafael. And he's right behind Vincent Salas, who also uh, Yame Torres is back there. Biscuits kind of fell back to fifth there, kind of getting loose. Uh, Yoni Hagner sixth, Vizui in seventh, uh, Semenek in eighth, Lindroth in ninth, and Evan in tenth. And that's your top ten right now. So you can throw a blanket over him. And once again, coming out of the S's, here comes the draft. The run for the 42. He thought about splitting the middle. He is going to split the middle. He does back out of it. It's too early on in the running to do that. And uh, if this is how this race is going to keep playing out, I don't want this race ever to end because this is incredible stuff as there's almost contact there between Clampett and the number seven car of uh, Torres. And that was uh, luckily sorted themselves out. Should note too that we talk about the draft being along the back straight, but in actual fact, these drivers are flat out all the way from the X to turn one because the S's in these cars are completely flat out. So that draft is actually coming to effect all the way from when they uh, get the foot down coming off that first corner. Oh no! Big crash behind them. Lindroth is in that. Yoni Hagner is in that. Looking to see who else might have been involved. Oh, it looks like it was off Seminex front bumper. Going to load up the GSRC replay machine here and uh, give you another look at that one. Ryan, tell us what you saw. Very awkward contact. Uh, Simonac and uh, Hagner sort of just awkwardly came together left rear to right front, coming off the exit of that corner, and it's hooked Hagner into the fence, and Lindroth caught a bit of the wall in uh, reaction to it as well. So uh, you can see there from the uh, top view, the contact between them and uh, hard to call. I would call that one a racing incident, but uh, incredibly unlucky there for Hagner. Yeah, and it does sound like uh, they're actually going to call avoidable contact with the 42 and wow. Powell uh, Semantic. So uh, he's going to be black flag for that one. Mickley, I'm watching some action here. Michael Derby right now trying to keep that car straight. Got a lot going on here all of a sudden all throughout the field. We'll keep the eye here on the uh, on the leaders. Is uh, That's just as nuts. <laughs> bumper to bumper through the S's and Salas is in a bit of strife there because he's pulled out from the draft. He's going to get no help because uh, Torres is going to, or sorry, Jurassic is going to pull up to the rear bumper of Logan Clampett. But a huge run coming as well from uh, the car in front of Busquets, which is, uh, which is Torres. <laughs> and uh, as all these cars duck and weave their way along the back straight, chain conditions very quickly, uh, a little bit difficult to keep up with uh, who's who and uh, very quickly learning which car is which. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. One, one uh, I guess, uh, consequence of seeing that contact there was uh, Seminek just a minute ago is now the top nine have uh, broken away. And uh, granted, you know, it's still very tight racing, but you got the uh, entire distance there in the, the, the uh, flat part of the boot between those vehicles now, between that first lead pack and that second pack. So. Uh, packs have broken up, but still very, very close as uh, look at it, Salas pushing Clampett. <laughs> that was a massive pack for a uh, 12th place. They're side by side, pretty much seven cards deep. It's wild back there, but uh, if we take a look at it there, we <laughs> see as a, uh, what is it? We got two by two, four cards deep, a little bit of contact almost between uh, Sega and uh, Manny Alfafi too, and they're just sorting themselves out now to go single file, but we got two packs, of, two big packs at the front of the field, 
not showing any signs of slowing down in terms of the action on track. I'm halfway through almost as well. Yeah, this race is is flying, so to speak. So there'll uh, there will be. Uh definitely uh, some things to sort out at the end of this one is uh, now that second pack hits the front straightaway uh, looking at uh, who's coming down pit road that is Fernandez Fernandez coming down pit road uh, maybe trying to take his pit stop now and maybe get out of that hornet's nest he was in we'll have to keep an eye on him as he's one of the very first uh, top runners to come down pit road and see how that works out for him and once again, the action at the front there, thinking about three wide. They are going to go three wide for the lead of the race. Down this back straightaway, it's Clampett, it's Salas, and it's Drasic that's actually pulling ahead down this back straightaway. And he might take the lead around the outside. If he's late enough on the brakes, as Salas moves up to the outside line right in front of uh, even there and uh, even... Did a very good job not to go into the back of Vincent Sellas there, and uh, they're still side by side. Just can't clear Logan Clampett. Yeah, Logan Clampett fighting hard on the outside, actually in the grass, trying to hang on to that thing. And <laughs> even though he was in the grass, he's going to go ahead and pull away here as they go into turn seven into the toe, uh, heading up into the boots, uh, the boot straight now, and. Uh, Logan Clampett takes back the lead over Rafael. Vincent Salas back there as well. Yame Torres was the one that helped push him to get back up there, but he's actually going to drop back to fourth here. I wonder when we're going to see some of these, uh, a lot more of these front runners come into the pit lane because they're being held up. There's no doubt about that by uh, how much they're racing each other. They may be getting a bit more speed down this back straight with the bump drafting and tandem drafting, but through the tight and twisty sections of the track, they could be going quicker by themselves. If you manage to pit with no one else around you, you might be able to pull a bit of an undercut on the cars you're racing. And that might be something we see that could allow someone to jump out ahead, ahead of the uh, sort of where the, the margin is, maybe about a second where the car behind gets that big slipstream effect. Could pull yourself ahead of that and uh, get home free without too much drama that we're seeing now. And you just saw just a moment ago, one of my favorite moments in these MX-5 races, the lights coming on to the vehicles. We are heading into that transition from evening into the night time. And by the time we end this thing, it'll end up being uh, uh, even a little bit darker than it is now. So that always adds an extra little bit of an element to things. And uh, it's pretty cool to see. So that's uh, that's what's going on out there right now. And uh, once again, going down the back straightaway, Logan Clampett in the lead. But now he's going to get a push from Rafael. But look at that big run that Vincent Salas has. And he's got the train behind him. How much can they go? Clifford Abbott put some wheels in the grass. I believe that was Clifford Abbott anyway yes it was he put some wheels in the grass it's going to kind of stall out that run he's holding his own on the outside of the outer loop now and heading down into the through the chute into turn six so enter the boot vincent Salas is going to slide out in front but logan clampett had himself a really good exit to that corner vincent Salas is going to try to slide down to defend here as they go through turn seven and through the toe and Logan Clampett's going to end up sliding back behind Vincent Salas. They go single file, but that doesn't last long. It doesn't, and uh, they're side by side already again. Salas is trying to defend that inside from Logan Clampett. When they crossed the line, it was uh, under two seconds separating the top eight cars. 2.2, in fact, covering this cop nine. So uh, they're as close as you'll ever see in a race here on iRacing. It's... Uh, not often we see racing like this, but uh, in this uh, Big C's MX-5 Challenge, we do seem to see it week on week. We do, and uh, riding on board now with uh, last week's winner, Wasim Fazui. Kind of has a, a good view at the tail end of this lead pack here. Yeah, Wasim, it seems like to me, has been kind of, as we are looking at Vincent Salas coming down pit road, there's somebody right in front of him coming down as well. Couldn't see who that was. Clampett. It's Logan Clampett, Logan Clampett. Nope. Two of our leaders coming down pit road. These two are going to be able to work together to push themselves, if they're clever, push themselves down the back straight. Don't try and pass each other and go side by side. And pump in a very fast outlap because I do suspect we'll see the rest of that front pack respond to this pit stop next time by. And this could allow them to pull out a little bit of a margin on the rest of the field if they work together. 
Well, don't tell that lead pack that because they are still going at it tooth and nail. Clifford Aben right now has the lead of that uh, of the race. Uh, as uh, Diame Torres is pushing him down the back straightaway right now. And uh, Rafael is actually the one that's kind of hung out to dry here at the moment on screen right now. Uh, looking at that uh, 21 machine. Trying to see who that is. Lindroth. All right, Christian Lindroth is out there. Uh, all right, uh, I believe uh, we're going to throw it over to Siasen here for something. Yes, indeed. Remember Christian Lindroth? He was back in that top 10 battle earlier on and fighting out with the leaders. Well, he was involved in a contact, but very unlucky there. And right now, after completing his pit stop, getting a brand new car, well, on lap number 10, he went 208.0, last time around 208.6. That means he is lapping on pace or faster than the leaders right now who are battling. Now, that is an interesting case for the undercut there if you get some company for drafting or even if you drive alone. Back to you, Adam. Yeah, thanks for that. And of course, uh, that that's a very good point because Vincent Salas and Logan Clampett actually came out in traffic. So they're not going to get that benefit of having that clean track right away and try to see what happens here. Now the leader is coming back down through uh, uh, through turn uh, 10 and coming down to turn 11 here in just a moment. We'll see if they end up starting to come down pit road. Any all takers this time? <laughs> all of them. They're all coming down. It's that for Zui. So Racine for Zui has opted to stay out and he's doing the opposite to pretty much the entire front pack. Maybe he believes he can go faster Ooh. out there by himself. In that pack that uh, Logan Clampett and uh, Vincent Salas were trying to get through, there was contact. They had an accident that happened just behind Logan Clampett. That could have been disastrous for those guys. We'll take a look at that. And literally, Logan Clampett had just gotten around Thomas uh, Giesler. And when they made contact here, I believe it was just before this. It was coming out of the boot section in turn nine. We'll see here. See uh, Logan Clampett going to the inside, and then the contact happens right behind him. If that would have happened about two seconds earlier, it would have seemed uh, probably one of the front runners of this race get caught up in it. So thankfully uh, they missed that. Now looking at trying to find that lead pack and see where they all came out. And Vincent Salas is in front of, the, well, the Yame Torres, Biscuits. Biscuits had a great stop. He's well out in front of those guys. I think the big thing that we're going to have to watch for is, is Biscuits being that far out. But also, where does Racine Fazui go? Um, you know, Racine right now has cleaner track. So with cleaner track, uh, going back to that point that uh, Austin was making a minute ago, could he be setting faster lap times here in order to try to maybe leap ahead of those guys? We'll see how long he stays out here. Uh, yeah, for sure. But with Busquets being that far in front, even not on the two drivers that pitted a lap before him and had traffic, but the guys that he pitted the same lap with, I wonder if really he went a little bit risky with the uh, the field number there and has uh, maybe underfueled that car, hoping to save a bit in some slipstream would be the reason why he's so far out in front because you would suspect a little bit shower is putting as little much as little fuel in the car as they possibly could well, i have to see looking at clamp it now uh clamp it really trying to uh, uh to charge up there he's trying to get back to the front of that lead pack they all kind of came out together so clamp it salas torres uh, kind of together just like they've always been skets with that big stuff you, you mentioned the fuel part of it uh, there, Ryan. You, you almost have to wonder, did Biscuits put enough fuel in this in his vehicle to make it the rest of the way? Well, it's really hard to uh, find out when you're up on the commentary booth. I'll tell you how we can find out. When we get to the end of the race, if Busquets is still there, he put enough fuel in. <laughs> That's that, pretty that, that is sound logic. Know. That is sound <laughs> logic. I love it. It's really the only way we can know because uh, we don't know the uh, exact fuel numbers these guys are putting in. We can't see into their tanks. We can't see uh, anything at all. As uh, So we're going to have to keep an eye on that one with keen interest. As Racine Fazili is, by the way, he has stayed out another lap. So he's soldiering on out there. And uh, we're going to be paying attention to him to see where he uh, filters back into this battle. 
looking back, and those guys were setting faster lap times than him that last time by. So that pack is faster than he is. If I'm Racine Fazui, I'm coming down and trying to min minimize those losses. Yeah, for sure. Rafael Drasic, what a move. He was uh, basically pushing Clampett and Salas, and he had Torres to the outside. He went around all three of them down the back straight and into turn five. Hasn't quite cleared Salah slow. And for that incident that we saw just a couple of minutes ago, uh, Thomas Geisler was uh, black flag for avoidable contact. So uh, mid-pack runner there uh, in trouble. That was the race. That was the incident almost caught up Clampett. Now, back up that lead pack, though, uh, uh, Dragic uh, is doing his best, but Skets is still out there. He is just running crazy to, as, as far as ahead of those guys right now. Just incredibly fast pit stop. If you're just joining us, he was in the middle of that lead pack, and right now he's still out in front of that lead pack by trying to see the timing and scoring here by almost a good about two seconds there. So lots of time going back to Busquets and Salas. And Salas right now, I have to fit it off uh, Dragic. Uh, who has Torres back there and then Logan Clampett. This is a kind of reverse of what it's been most of the race with uh, uh, Clampett behind Torres. Usually Torres has been pushing Clampett. Yeah, that's been the case in most of the race, but it's worked out with the pit stops that they have switched around and maybe Salas is a, uh, or Clampett is a, uh, much happy being back here. He knows it's going to come down to jail from the final lap if they can catch Whiskets. Maybe he wants to be that uh, second or third car in line. Draw on his experience uh, on the oval scene where drafting is uh, pre prominent every single race. So uh, pull off a, a move for the win down the back straight on the final lap. All right, so that one pack that we were watching that had taken over the lead, they've all come down pit road. The last car that we're waiting as far as the leaders to come down is Fazui. So he has moved into the lead of this race. Behind him on the leaderboard right now is uh, Paul Semenek. I think he's actually just come down as well. So uh, Biscuits once. Fazui pits, but looking at the time that Fazui has lost, I think Biscuits will be the leader of this race, and that pack is doing their best right now to try to catch him. They are, and uh, we'll go back to uh, Oz, and he's got some uh, updates in the back of the pack. Indeed so, indeed so. Back in P number uh, 24, 25, 26, and so on. In the mid-20s now, in decent positions, you got a lot of drivers who have started very, very low. P number 43 for Adam Marriak, P46 for Teo Raisinen, and George Fike, and Simon Erpeling, and Owen Watts as well, starting in the uh, mid to low 40s, with Jack Andrzejczyk and Julian Villaret starting in 47 and 52, respectively. Now, an interesting point is that with all this craziness going on, all these battles going on, you can make a lot of positions by choosing your battles and just being calm. Back to you guys. Yeah, we're looking at Racine Fazui uh, coming down pit road. He missed it. He had to back up. So that right there is going to cost him even more time than what he was already losing on track. And there go the leaders right by him. And he is just now pulling out onto pit road. He'll be lucky to be able to join the back part of this pack. And there he goes. Actually going to be in the middle of yeah. it. So yeah, that actually that, that wasn't terrible. That definitely was not nearly as bad as I was thinking because there was times where he was running a half second slower than what that lead pack was. So that actually ended up working out not too bad. And he's going to get a push here from Torres to get him right back up to speed. Oh, never mind. Torres uh, ducks out from that. And uh, sorry, that is Drasic, not Torres. Torres is just in front of them. And Drasic doesn't help him, but the draft does help him, and he pulls back up towards Torres, who's uh, in behind Clampett and Vincent Salas. And just having a look at the lap times, it was a 2.087 last time by the Biscuits for a Vincent Salas. It was a 2.079. So they are closing by almost about a second on Biscuits. A lap. Biscuits is actually in the garage. Yeah, he's, he's pushing because he knows it. 
he can see that gap closing on his little F3 box right now. It's that lead pack as Logan Clampett actually breaks loose just a touch. Keeps his foot in the throttle, though. Doesn't lose a lot of time. But Biscuits, uh, that gap is closing. We're going to have a battle for the lead, I imagine, here in probably the next two or three laps. And I'll tell you, I... A you 40-minute know, race it doesn't even feel like 40 minutes. We only got about seven and a half minutes left in this thing. So, into this race starting to come down to a close in a hurry. And this lead pack is uh, Biscuits. Is once those guys get up there, I mean, he's giving you pretty much a sit and duck by the time when they do. He's got some lap traffic in front of him over the next couple of corners. We'll see if he's able to use some of that lap traffic, maybe use a draft, try to get a little bit of a jump up there. But uh, he's got his eye right now in his mirror. This is about to get hectic up here at the front once I catch Busquets. There are all those guys we said that were just backing out of potential moves to go three wide down the back straight. Not going to see any of that happening in the dying stages of this race. Basically, from now onwards, you've got to put yourself in the best spot possible as a hot <laughs> sell us deciding to use the grass. That's probably not the best spot possible for the dying stages of this race, but we're gonna be we're gonna be seeing some three wide action. I wonder if we'll see some four wide action down this back straight in the dying stages of this race. It's entirely possible. It's certainly wide enough, although just barely for four wide. That uh, if it's gonna happen, I think it will. As you can see, uh, uh, the Skets is running a different line down the back straightaway than the rest of the field, trying to make sure they can't use his draft to try to leak up to him. And already three wide back there. Oh, and a little bit of contact for Zumi going around off of Fell. And somehow most of those guys stay off of each other except Graham Sanders. Graham Sanders is going to be a little bit beat up. I think it's just body damage, although he's going to pull it off and probably park it. There was three wide there. Rafael just drives up just a touch, enough to send Racine all the way around. Racine doesn't touch anything, but then Graham Sanders, in the process of avoiding him, gets caught up in something. So uh, there were some victims there, unfortunately. And that's going to break up the back part of that pack even a little bit more. It actually started. There was a small slide from Torres, and as he caught it, he just clipped the left rear of Drasic's car ever so slightly, and that's what caused Drasic to slide up and hip check uh, Razim Fasili. Looking at uh, Torres, uh, uh, Torres has a little bit of damage on his uh, left front, but that is, uh, that's been there most of the race, so he's, uh, uh, don't know how much that's been affecting him at all. But right now, I mean, he'd want to have that clean front end after losing that much ground there in that action. As Logan Clampett, big run on Vincent Salas here, is able to pull alongside of him, heading into turn one, and can't do anything with it. Salas runs a little bit wide. He's going to make another trip through the grass here on the exit of one. They're going to head up to S's. As, as right now, Biscuits was able to use the draft for the lap car. Trump tried to distance himself just a little bit, but that lap car trying to come back on him. These guys probably need to start thinking about maybe trying to, to work together to try to catch up to Biscuits as that time on that clock is very quickly ticking away. Yeah, so Biscuits was a tenth quicker last time by then, or half a tenth quicker than Vincent Sellers last time by. Sellers actually got the wall on the left-hand side coming out of the final corner. That's why we saw Clampett coming at him. So Sellers is pushing that car to the absolute max, using up every last inch of racetrack he can possibly find. Can they get there, though? The gap is what? It's about 1.6 seconds on the cross the line, so they're probably about six or seven tenths away from being in range of uh, getting into that draft. And once they get into that draft, then that gap will come down very, very quickly. Two guys I want to give a shout out to here real quick. Alex Cofford in 10th position. He is up 19 spots from the start of this race. Mirsaw Gnostic, he's, um, excuse me, not Mirsaw, uh, Bruno Bancara. He's up 21 positions, up to 16th. He started this thing in 37th. So two guys that have made some big moves uh, in the process of this race. So give a shout out to those guys before we go into the final laps here. And speaking of those final laps, 
That lead pack is starting to come together. The lapped car getting out of the way. The uh, leader right now, the Sked, Solace in second, Clampett third, Rafael Dragic in fourth position. And uh, Busquets is now going to find himself at the clutches of Solace. The Solace is going to be able to take his toe and start to use it. So we're going to see about a four-car battle for the lead here, coming down to the closing laps because of that contact with Fazui and uh, Drasic and Torres just about a couple laps ago. So four cars heading down the back straight on the final lap. Now that will be interesting because they're going to be bumper to bumper. Solace is going to drag... Clampett is going to drag Drasic right up onto Fernando Busquets here because Salas is firmly and squarely in that slipstream. He may well pull alongside him down this back straight. We'll see if Busquets moves to go defensive. He does not. He holds his line. Salas has a great run going down the back straight away, heading toward the outer loop. Is Salas going to be able to clear him? He does, but that puts Busquets right back in his toe. Is he going to have any kind of momentum to try to make a move here going down the outer loop? He does not. They're going to stay nose to tail, but really, they are nose to tail now. Your top four have completely come together. Busquets did not show any sign of wanting to defend that position, and maybe that tells us exactly what Busquets is thinking about this final lap, which uh, should be next time by. He does not want to be leading this thing. And I reckon Clampett. My money's on Clampett. He's probably the best driver out of the three in terms of additioning on track. He's going to get a nice double slipstream heading onto the back straightaway. And Drasic will want to be right there in case anything happens. Let's see if he's able to. Is now uh, the Skets pushing Solace a little bit here. Clampett almost to the back bumper. They get off each other before they head into the corner. Heading through the heel now. They'll be coming up into uh, the... Uh, a turn nine in just a moment where they exit the boot, get back onto the track. If you watch any kind of NASCAR you're familiar with here, uh, that's where they rejoin that, that part of the track, eventually down to turn 10 into turn 11 in just a moment. But uh, they're going to be taking the white flag this next time by. So Solis, Busquets, Clampett, Dragic. That is your top four. Also got to pay attention. We've got a battle here for fifth as well. That's Yame Torres back there, Clifford Aben, Anthony Burroughs. So we'll watch that once they come across the line. So these guys now, this is where all the moves are going to happen here for your leaders. On the throttle, Vincent Salas lies way wide. He's in the grass. He used every bit of the grass, not just the track. And he actually gets a big run on Busquets. We're going to try to take just a very quick replay of this and to see how much of that he uses. Off tracks where we're going, we don't need off tracks. We need actual tires. I mean, he used every little bit right there, and that set up a big run, but that big run coming back to bite him now. Oh, oh big move. Busquets. Contact. Solace. Solace goes sliding. And the top, these out of it. Top three now are in it. Hard racing going down to backstretch. Put Busquets into him. It's now Drajic trying to find his way around Busquets. That moves Logan Clampett up into the lead. Drajic trying to find a way around Busquets. Busquets holding firm. He is on the uh, almost to the back bumper. Question now is: Is Busquets going to have enough time to try to make a move back on Logan Clampett? The only area where slipstream is going to come into effect is this little straight here, but I don't think it's going to be long enough. He's got to close that gap by himself and have a lunge down the inside. He might just not have enough time, but he might be close enough here. We'll see. Clampett moves over in effort to defend. He wants the inside of that corner, but Skets all over. He almost touches him just a little bit going through the corner. They're coming through turn eight. They're going to be coming up through turn nine. We mentioned this is kind of a little bit of a blind apex coming through here. They nail it perfectly. They are still nose to tail. It looks like uh, Drajic falling off these two just a little bit. He's got two more chances here. Coming through turn 10. On the throttle once again. Very light braking going through turn 11. He's going to get a look to the inside. Clampett shuts the door. Give the win to Logan Clampett for round two of Big C's MX-5 Challenge. Second place is going to go to Busquets. Drajic ran out of fuel. He's going to fall back into that second pack, which was led by Eben Torres. Burroughs, moves up from 17th to 7th. P10 is a battle, apparently. Trying to get back to it. Fazui's going to come home in 10th position, excuse me, 9th position as uh, Jose Soraya.
looking okay. So he's in ninth. We're seeing Fazui was in eighth. A little bit of a shake up there at the end. Go ahead, Ryan. I got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> Look at that. Adam Mark, I can notice. <laughs> I'll see Adams. Oh, here's another big pack. 23rd on back. Jack Anderak here. They all come across. No big changes here. Here's Nick Cardi coming off road uh, turn 11. Suchi Ijimara will be following back behind him. That was a good battle back there for about 30th. Another good battle behind those guys. Battles all over this trace track here at the end. Looking at Sanders. Graham Sanders had himself a really good run going earlier on. He fell back. He's out of the points. It's all about pride now. But he's going to be able to hold 34th position over Michael Derby. Going back to P36 now. Shane Cameron's coming across the line. Behind them be Subalix Prem in 37, 38. So you go to Celso Nito. Here's a battle. Hawken and Marcus Atona, uh, Alatonin. I don't think Marcus is going to have anything here for Hawk. And Hawken was involved in an accident earlier on. He's going to recover to a 39th place finish. It looks like he's going to come out of turn 11 clean. And with that, I think that's all the battles that we've got left here on the track. Wow, that got insane in a hurry at the end of this thing. We'll sort through the final order when we come back. I hope you were able to keep up at the end of that thing because it was hard for even for us and we've been watching the entire race. Wow, another exciting Big C's MX-5 Challenge race, this time at Watts Glen. Uh, it, it's like it's like a trilogy, so we're going to have to see what Bathurst holds for us next week. 
Hey, welcome to the minus 273 post race show. Whether it's on the real track or the virtual track, minus 273 has one goal in mind to produce the best racing gloves to get the job done. With unmatched comfort, durability, and style, their gloves will leave your old ones in the dust. Find out how they can help you by visiting minus 273.biz. I also got to throw it out there great sponsor for MX5 and Big C's MX5, great sponsor too for the Lionheart series as well. So definitely check those guys out. All right, and uh, the turning point presented by Turn Racing. Merge the gap between sim sport and motorsport with Turn Racing. Turn carries a wide variety of steering wheels to suit any and all of your needs from advanced sim racing wheels to practical street wheels. They will surely have something for you. Check them out at turnracing.com. And, and Ryan, uh, the turning point of the race. This is, I believe, when we were coming down to the uh, the last trip down the back straightaway here on the white flag lap. Talk us through it. Yes, yeah, Salas was desperate to hold on to that lead of the race, and there was a big run from uh, Torres, or sorry, Drasic, the forced Busquets to go to the inside, trying to get by Salas, and it was very tight, but uh, the turning point there is Salas getting turned by Busquets, just tagged, as right, Rhea probably didn't have enough time to get down and cover that white line, and Salas got deposited off from the lead of the race. And of course, Salas uh, was able to get back up into seventh position at the end. So he was able to come home in the points. So that was your turning point of the race. Let's go ahead and go to the results. We got a lot of them. 59 cars took the green flag here today. Logan Clampett, though, led them all. He was up front most of the way. He's going to come home with that first place. Second is going to be Fernando and Tully Busquets. Clifford Aben in third, Yame Damasis Torres in fourth, Anthony Burroughs fifth, Dragic in sixth, Salas in seventh, Racine Fazui came into this race after winning last week. He's going to come home eighth today, ninth, Jose Soraya, and tenth, Alex Cofford. Juan Manuel Fernandez came home on 11th. They had a power summon, like we saw in the uh, incident earlier on in the race, in 12th place. Rory Coimbra, 31st to 13th. Big gain up the field for him. That's off to the 78 car there. Christian Linderoff home in 14th. Uh, Benagra 15th. Harold and Muriak. Adams Jr. and uh, Jack Anderick. And then George Fike running out that top 20. Hang on a sec. Jack Anderick 52nd to 19th. Oh boy. Wow. That is some. That is some crazy moves right there from Jack Anderick. So great for him. He's definitely our big mover here for today. He's uh, looking at 21st. Uh, we'll find uh, uh, Simon or Pelig, uh, Villaret uh, coming home in 22nd. 23rd is going to go to Watts. Hagner, 24th. Cardi, 25th. Ishimara at 26th. Uh, Cox, the third and 27th. 28th, uh, Brian Sebesky, Lee Martin in 29th. And uh, Teo Rossman in, in 30th spot. Graham Sanders finished 31st after the issues we saw for him earlier on. Had a Michael Derby 32nd, 33rd, but Shane Cameron. Prem was 34th, had a Celso Nito 35th. Brendan Hawke, another guy who got into issues, finished 36th. Marcus Altonen 37th, Rachel Williams 38th. Matty Elflaffy 39th, and uh, top 40 rounded out by Absolute Good Good Team. You can tell this is a long list of cars because even Ryan's have to take a deep breath halfway through his list. Jeff <laughs> Lovell in 40 first, 40 seconds, going to go to Arvalami. Harrow in 43rd, Dav Davitier in 44th, Geisler, Geisler rather, in 45th, uh, Per Copy in 46th, Belly in 47th, Mistock in 48th, Berger in 49th, and 50th is going to go to Kamara. And then rounding out the field, <laughs> what a field. Leon Cabara 51st, Fabian Ponce 52nd, Nicholas O'Short 53rd, Richard Schoffner 54th, Slaviak in 55th, John Sega 56th, Ben Opstall, he uh, ran into some issues and finished only 57th, Benjamin Walsh 58th, Alex Albert 59th, and uh, not taking the start was Christian Milky, but that is our 60 car field the results from Watkins Glen today. What a race we had. It was, and you know what? Hey, <laughs> we got our winner. In here, Logan Clampett. Logan, fantastic run. I mean, uh, definitely using some of that draft experience out there down the back straightaway. Uh, tell us about those last couple of laps. Uh, I really wanted to get to, I believe it was the 22. Uh, so I told, I messaged uh, Visante to kind of stay in his draft, and thankfully we caught him. And the last lap, I kind of laid back. 
uh, hopefully to get a really big run and take it three wide and hopefully clear them into the carousel, which, I mean, that, did, <laughs> that didn't happen, but um, uh, I believe the 22 tried to make a move down the inside and uh, Basante tried to defend block uh, and it didn't really work out and it lost his momentum, uh, the 22s, and and I knew the first one in the infield probably had the best chance to win the race since the draft. There's no really way to uh, pass. Uh, there's no really big passing zones draft-wise. So uh, I just kind of tried to lay back there uh, and try and play it smart. And thankfully, uh, it worked out in my first ever start in this league. Yeah, I mean, and of course, you picked a uh, just a crazy race to come in for your first start. Kind of got a taste of what these 59-car fields at uh, MX-5s are. Uh, it certainly beats a 40-car field for peak. Uh, for today, though, I mean, the, 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 that set it in that you're going to want to try to come back next week at Bathurst? Uh, hopefully, I don't believe I'll make next week, which is kind of a bummer. I didn't make last week either because of work, but... Hopefully I can make future races and um, I don't I don't know if I'll be running for for the championship since I'll probably miss so many but uh, we'll try and make uh, as many races as possible this is uh, this is a pretty fun league with some really competitive drivers. Well, we'll certainly happy to have you for what we can get Logan. Hey great run here for today. Uh, anybody like to thank you real quick? Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to thank, uh, GTR simulators. They, I actually just partnered with them, uh, last week. So, uh, they're new on board. So check them out at GTR simulator.com. Uh, Burton Klingerman at eSports, uh, Clifford for, uh, putting on this league. It's a lot of fun. And I love, I love, love, love the MX five. Uh, so I was definitely looking for a league to run in, uh, in my off time in the off season. So Big thanks to him and then you guys for broadcasting. Well, thanks for stopping by, Logan. We'll catch you on the other side. Uh, next up, we're going to go ahead and get in uh, Clifford Aben. Of course, uh, Clifford uh, helps uh, organize the series and everything else, and Ryan's going to talk to him. Clifford, uh, third place today out from 14th place. You uh, missed out on being part of that lead group back pack at the end. You're certainly in it for the uh, first part of the race. What sort of happened to break up that big pack? Because uh, it looked like it was going to be about a dozen cars fighting for the lead at one. Yeah, I couldn't really tell you honestly what happened. I haven't looked at it yet, but uh, Racim started spinning in front of the pack, and then people just kind of had to split and kind of guess which way to go. And I kind of guessed wrong and got hit from behind and kind of got hit a little bit. It slowed me down. Uh, that let the front four get away that were completely unaffected. Um, so then after that, I just tried to fight for the best I could. Yes, yeah, certainly. And uh, it was a uh, incredible racing at the front. We didn't quite catch the uh, final lap with you, but you gained a spot on the final lap. And uh, what were your – how much planning went into the final lap for you? Trying to work out exactly where you need to position that car down that back straightaway. Well, I was lucky that I wasn't leading the pack. That's a start. And then my friend Anthony Burroughs was behind me, and we were talking, and we teamed up to go past Haume, and we both slotted in. Um, I was able to get by him, but Anthony was still racing with Haume, and Haume eventually beat him, but it allowed me to get away. And then Rafal ran out of fuel at the end, and of course the accident with Vicente allowed me to get two more spots onto that. So what was a fifth ended up being a third, so that's good. It certainly is, and... Uh... Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I do believe you're the man that runs a series, or owns a series, correct? Yep, that is correct. Well, there we go. That's a uh, glad I'm asking this to you, then, <laughs> not some random. But uh, so you I mean you overjoyed, happy with uh, how this uh, first two rounds have played out with the numbers? You got full fields for first two rounds. Oh yeah, it's been amazing. This series has really taken off this season. Two races straight with a full 60 car grid, and the racing has been amazing. Extremely clean for the most part, and I just couldn't be happier. Well, uh, it's a incredible series, incredible racing, incredible job getting this one up and running. Before we let you go, and congratulations on third today, before we let you go, uh, shout out sponsors you want to give? Yeah, exactly. So I would like to shout out the league sponsors, GTR Simulator, Sim Racing Studio, Minus 273, Turn Racing, and SHH Shifter. 
for all of their support. Of course, GSRC for the broadcast. You guys do a great job. And all the competitors so far this season. It's been a wonderful first two races, and I'm excited for next week at Bathurst. All right. Thank you very much, Clifford. Uh, good chatting to you. Hopefully we'll see him up back in the booth next round. But I uh, do believe, or I think, Fazili's up in the booth with a uh, Oshin Yes, hello. I am joined here by Rasim Fasui. Uh, P number eight at the finish line here today. You started P number six. You had an interesting race. Talk us through that amazing battle we saw at the front. Um, uh, me and Brandon, we were trying to really just save as much fuel as we could and trying to get a jump because it's a lot of straightaways at this track, trying to get a one, two second jump, jump at the pit stops. And then Brandon gets spun because uh, three wide to that's corner what the turn five turn four i believe turn five so then brandon's gone and then i'm like okay no teammates i can manage so i try to i'm just avoiding guys trying to put me all the time and at the end i was a victim of many accidents that happened today so yeah uh, really unfortunate but i'm looking forward for future more cornery races if you will yeah, you mentioned more cornery. Now, Watkins Glen Classic Boot, it's an absolute draft fest with these cars. How is it from the driver's perspective to be out there? You have cars all the time around you and you really have to have your head on a swivel, don't you? Uh, for 15 minutes, it's fun. For a full 40 minutes with a, with a championship down the line, it's annoying um those type of races i learned today you really just have to be up front you have to be ahead first or second you can't be third fourth fifth sixth because you see what happened today people trying to make it three wide where you shouldn't um nobody's looking left or right nobody's listening to their spotter so yeah it's unfortunate because it's a great series but races like these really makes you want to think about it twice next time you're trying to log in well how about the championship you still you have bought hers next week another track which is kind of like Watkins Glen but not in any way so you have two long straights where you can draft where you can get the passes up on the high up on the mountain you can't make a pass how are you planning to protect your nine point championship lead uh qualifying 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 it's all going to be about qualifying because after that first straight it's all corners so if you can make a gap and the top group makes a gap and then the top group race clean with no one else jumping into the top group and not knowing what they're doing. It's going to be perfect. Happened a lot last season with me, Hartley, and a lot of other guys, Maxim Bunovic, everyone. So, yeah, I'm just looking forward to that. Uh, and I'm just going to practice my uh, single lap pace. Well, good luck with your qualifying practice, Rasim, and good luck in Bathurst. Any shout-outs or any free words you would like to give to? Yeah, yeah. I want to thank uh, Clifford for organizing this series, regardless of what happened today. It's always amazing to to get so many people at a racetrack and to really be pumped for uh, such a championship. Also, I want to thank the Vulnerable Racing team, my, my team for supporting me all the time and uh, giving us feedback as always. I want to thank also all the sponsors, uh, GTR Simulator, SW Sniper, Minus 273 for uh, sponsoring this league. And also want to thank GSRC for the great coverage as always. Well, thank you, Rasim. We try our best here at the Red Brand. Now, I believe it is time to head back up to Adam for some closing words for this broadcast. Yeah, thank you, Austin. And thanks for your help today. Uh, uh, you know, the sun's setting on Watton's Glen. Fantastic race out there. And I mean, that was just incredible once again out there again this week lots of close racing all throughout the field so gtr simulator want to thank them and gtr is getting a lot of thanks today shh shifter sim racing studio minus 273 turn racing got to thank all those guys for sponsoring the series thanks to companies that provide the software and hardware for our broadcast listed here on your screen additional thanks to june lalon who provides our wonderful music see the screen for how to get a hold of more of her great work thanks to the team today sean ryan Ossian, Doogie, if you'd like to find out more about GSRC, including upcoming races and a link to our merchandise store, you can find it at GlobalSimRacingChannel.com, or you can check out our social media on Twitter at GSR Channel, Facebook at slash GlobalSimRacingChannel, and Instagram at GSRCGram. 
And if you'd like to support the channel, go check out our merchandise store, as we mentioned, gsrcstorenv.com. The link is in the description below. Don't forget to head on over to our YouTube page and hit the big red subscribe button so you don't miss a moment here on Global Sim Racing Channel. Next up, hey, we're going to Ryan's Corner of the World, Bathurst, Sunday, December 8th. That's going to be at 4.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. If you'd like to have a look at some of our upcoming races, listen on the screen. Go check them out. Mark them down your calendar. Until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.